Hi, welcome to the Federal Video Interview. In this episode, we'll be interviewing Mr. Neeraj Sharma, the Vice Chairman of the Lexicon Group, which works in the area of education and has several edutech and educational institutes across the country. Mr. Sharma is also the founder of EduCrack, an immersive online app-based platform that includes AI-enabled tests to prepare students for competitive exams. Thank you, Mr. Sharma, for taking time off to talk to us. Into multiple, uh, you know, uh, businesses. Uh, so into education, which obviously is not a business for me, but yeah, into education where, uh, you know, got schools and colleges right from uh, KG to PG, uh, and uh, close to about uh, fifteen thousand students plus studying in these institutions. So that is one. That is where all of it originated. That's when I also thought that you know it's it's high time that. Uh, uh, where we integrate technology into education and make it more accessible to a lot of uh, students all over the country. That's that's where uh, Educrack as a as a company originated, and uh, this company was basically is is basically into you know coaching for competitive examinations. So like a CLAT, like a CAT, uh, UPSC, railway examinations, and so on and so forth. So. This was a company which you know I thought, like I just said, that want to make it accessible to the students, make it available at a uh, you know uh, low cost, and uh, make it extremely uh, user friendly in terms of the right kind of technology being used, so that uh, a student doesn't miss uh, going to an offline class and gets almost about the same feeling. Uh, so 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 that's that. I mean I can go on and on because it's my baby. So. I can go on and on talking about the product and uh, what we are doing to make a difference in the society and the way learning and teaching would happen. So that's about it. Uh, there are other companies. We are into legal tech. I'm, I have a, I have a legal tech, uh, tech startup. I have a, uh, you know another edu, uh, edu tech startup which is called Thinker Place, which is for uh, schools. So yeah, so you know, so those are educational kits where we teach coding through that, where we, you know, are basically experiential learning that happens through Thinkerplace. So uh, many companies like this, uh, so you can, you can say it's a, I'm a serial entrepreneur, uh, you know, getting into a lot of things, looking at a lot of uh, avenues and uh, that's passion. That's, that, that keeps me going. Okay, okay. Uh, let us, let us, you know, in on uh, EduTrack, uh, if you could sort of, explain that in detail and uh, i also yeah. understand that it uses ai and ml uh, uh, quite exhaustively that's that's right so educrack like i was just telling you you know is into competitive examinations so mm -hmm. the origination uh, the idea behind educrack was it obviously started during uh, the pandemic mm -hmm. and uh, where students were not not coming out of the houses and they were sitting in the house they were, you know, not getting the education that they were supposed to get. So that's when, you know, uh, I thought that, okay, like many, many, many others like me. So I also thought that, you know, let, let's get to people's homes, let's get to children's homes and let's mm -hmm. teach them at, at their place where they are. So mm -hmm. that's where EduPrac started. But then uh, also started with the thought that, okay, today there is pandemic and pandemic is not going to stay there forever. So what is it that you're going to do, you know, to continue once the pandemic is over? Is it that children will get back to offline? Is it that, uh, you know, online will not be used any further? Is it that online is a bubble which is, which is going to burst post-pandemic? So considering all those aspects, what we also did was that uh, uh, we, we tried to understand as to why does a student go, uh, you know, offline? Uh, why would a student choose offline and not online post-pandemic? Uh, so we found out reasons that a student basically goes offline because uh, of peer learning. Uh, so can can we create that into our uh, ed, ed tech platform, which is Educrack? So the answer was yes, we can create that, and we did that. Then the other factors were, you know, uh, learning from the teachers, learning from uh, uh, recorded lessons. So what we did is we also. Uh, you know, so doubt solving was a big issue to an online course. So what we did is because of the uh, AI enabled that, uh, technology that we used, 
So what we did was our, our recorded lectures uh, is something which is a special feature that what you can do is even a, a lecture which is recorded. So a child is going online, learning from the teacher live class, that class is recorded. And once that class is recorded and a child, a student is not understood something, the student can refer back to the recorded class, pause the recorded class, pose a question to a recorded class and get an answer. So oh. that happened because of the, uh, you know, MLN AI uh, is what we integrated and created such uh, kind of features. Then we created a feature like, uh, like a Facebook feature where we call it the edu meet. So that was another reason we thought that a student wants to go offline and not would want to stick on to online post pandemic. So uh, student wants to go out, meet friends, student wants to go out, you know, uh, exchange ideas. So we created a platform within EduCrack called the EduMeet. So EduMeet is a platform where students can exchange notes, where they can talk to each other. Where, uh, obviously, uh, you know, it's like a Facebook feature where you send a friend request only if the request is accepted. That's when you can start uh, talking to a group, to stop talking to a, uh, you know, a, another fellow student. And uh, so that is another feature that we created and we thought, okay, studying uh, online uh, without solving, that can happen. Meeting people, that can happen. Uh, we also then uh, offline created chapters where students can meet, where we can have sessions even offline, but uh, maybe once in three months, something like that. So we tried to inculcate all those features where we thought that a student, even post pandemic, wants to stick to an online course and not go offline, we inbuilt all of that. So, mm -hmm. and we made it uh, you know, cost effective so that it uh, goes to many homes. And ultimately uh, the, the idea is to, you know, to be a household name. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, you sort of simulated an environment for uh, students. Uh, as far as offline classes are concerned, right? You simulated it. That's right. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. And 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 then uh, uh, how did uh, AI and uh, ML help you in this uh, uh, thing? I mean, how what exactly happened? How did you sort of when you when you when you said that uh, uh, they could actually uh, watch or listen to the recorded version of a of a class, and then if they ask questions, they could kill, still get those answers. Now, how is that made possible? Yeah, that's that's because of the technology. That's because of uh, obviously, uh, you know, a lot of data goes in uh, while you are, you know, creating something. So a lot of uh, machine learning would happen. Uh, mm -hmm. Only post that, you know, the 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 machinery, the technology would be able to uh, give desired results. So okay. it only would happen with a lot of data feeding. So a lot of questions, uh, mm -hmm. which a student generally would have and ask. So this is mm -hmm. an ongoing process. You know, it, it doesn't, uh, nobody in this world can say, hey, I'm, I've, I've been there, done that, and I'm completely, I'm, I'm perfect, right? Mm -hmm. so, so it is an ongoing process. So you keep feeding the, the machinery, you keep feeding the machine with a lot of data, which ultimately gives you the desired results. So that oh. data feeding has, has been a mammoth task. It's not been easy. We've spent a lot of money in creating that. We spent a lot of time uh, in creating that. And uh, and that's how we could do this. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, what has been the response so far? How do the state, two students take this? <clears throat> students are taking it, uh, you know, very well. Uh, though there's, there's immense competition, like, you know, you know there are giants, uh, Without mm -hmm. naming anybody, there are giants sitting in the industry and mm -hmm. uh, trying to do whatever best they can. Obviously, every person has got the right to run their business and to do well in in, the, in their capacity. Uh, mm -hmm. So we are, you know, what what we've tried to do is we don't want to go the the funding route. Uh, we are very conventional uh, business house where we want to. You know, my, my father has always told me that mm -hmm. so, uh, you know, so we go the very conventional way. We don't want funds from people to, to make ourselves big. Uh, so we got enough funds to make the business big. We've got enough funds to, you know, take care of uh, my house, which is not, uh, you know, where I don't mix the two. 
so so you know my 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 funds will take care of my business and uh, i will grow stabilize and grow for, grow grow further that's that's mm-hmm. the conventional way of doing business uh, some people do tell me that hey mr sharma you are a fool i say thank you so much but uh, that is the way i want to lead my life i may be wrong i may be wrong but that's that's a personal choice so now that the students have uh, returned to schools uh, do they still use your tool uh, uh, yes they do it? like i said you know we like i said we created that ecosystem where uh, even if they are going to school they don't you know uh, even if they don't go to school they will not miss the school so okay. but yeah they are still using it. to answer that question yes they are still using it okay okay there's not been a dip in uh, uh, the number of users uh because there has been a slight dip there has been a slight dip okay. but a very slight dip okay okay mm-hmm. now uh, let us look at the larger system of uh, edutech uh, sector in india um uh, of course uh, you don't want to name some of the big ones but uh, i find that uh, uh, there have been acquisitions and there have been uh, offline uh, tutorial schools being acquired by online ones and st- st- stuff like that um, the, the kind of trend that i see is uh, that uh, there are players like you uh, and there are players the big ones who have got massive funding um, so in a scenario where there are as you said giants in terms of valuation well invested uh, companies by vcs and there are companies like yours now what kind of niche or what kind of space uh, do you think that you have been able to carve out for yourself uh, which sort of allows you to be in the same space like i said you know uh, like i said it's it's a different platform that we've created right? you know mm-hmm. so even if uh, now now these giants are coming up with a hybrid kind of a model yeah uh, so so what they've done is they have pumped in a lot of money to create an online platform now mm-hmm. they are pumping in a lot of money to create an offline platform offline yeah yeah so so you know uh, i don't buy that logic so what we have done is we have created an online platform which can also support offline needs okay okay mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so so that's that's where the niche is that's where the difference is oh okay okay yeah. interesting uh, you're actually right uh so these big online giants have uh, edutech giants have actually started uh, offline i see it in uh, several places where they have offline classes as well actually defeating the very purpose of having something like this now uh, so, so um, but the, but the bigger bigger issue uh, and uh, you know this was uh, something that we discussed in an earlier webinar as well was that uh, uh when you see um students passing out of je or any of these competitive exams uh you see that the offline ones are the ones that they swear by in terms of uh, talking about them rather than the online ones and this was a question that was put forth in front of the panel uh, itself now why is that uh, transition not happening uh, uh, assuming there are the top 10 ranks in je uh, main or for example a neat uh, or uh, in in karnataka it's a cd in other states it must be something else uh, they always refer to their offline classes but they don't actually refer to the uh, edutech platform when you talk about online ones <clears throat> why is it that See, oh, I'll, i'll i'll tell you i'll i'll tell you as much as i would know uh, what what happens basically is you know education is something which is not like a commodity where you open a restaurant you go try it out you like it you take it you don't like it you, you mm-hmm. move out mm-hmm. uh, so education is a lot of faith building mm-hmm. so you know unless you create that faith uh, unless and until you create the the kind of environment that uh, a student is looking at you student do not come to you and faith mm. building is is a long term process mm. it would not happen overnight all these edtech companies that you are seeing today mm. uh, are very new companies mm. 
uh, they are not as old as you know uh, all the other uh, players that that would be there offline hmm. so these are new companies and like i said faith building so they are they are not even getting uh, the right students so what what's happening today the desperation of getting students uh, online and to meet up the expenses the huge expenses that these companies are making students hmm. of any any kind would come in so where is where are where are the parameters of intake there is no parameter of intake so the moment see any 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 institution uh, that is doing well today offline institution that is doing well today is an institution which has very stringent parameters of giving admission to a student hmm they have to go through a lot of processes and hmm. only that would happen so once you pick up a right student and you you know nourish them well you you take care of them and you polish those students well they are bound to a majority of them are bound to do well so so this this you know that you want a lot of students from anywhere and anyhow defeats the motive that is one and secondly for these good students even to join Uh, these coaching classes like i said faith building would take some time it's not going to happen overnight so compared to so compared to you know the the institutions that have been uh, centuries old and have been working there and have proved their metal we at tech platforms have to still prove our metal and for us to build that faith will still take some more time oh okay okay so obviously the uh... online version of quota factory uh, there is still a long way to go right still a long i yeah, that's my take on that okay okay uh, so what are the one two three things that you need to do that uh, maybe i'm sure you have your targets for that um, uh, i mean you just don't want to remain a simple online edutech platform but you want to actually have right. targets to uh, to actually uh, forget about revenues and profits but about actually uh, uh, so that the students actually benefit from that yeah uh, so yeah. you know what happens is uh, because i am into offline education as well so mm-hmm. what happens is an offline uh, you know the uh, when, when this pandemic happened uh, mm-hmm. the kind of investments that we have made for for building uh, maybe a school or a college is is hundreds of crores you know one campus that you build is nothing less than a 25 30 uh, cr uh, bare minimum so oh. if you build four or five campuses like that which we have so it's a lot of money that you're pumping in so mm-hmm. so i what i feel is you know and these are all trust this is they're not owned by me right these are all trust i'm just yeah. a caretaker of that yeah. of that institution yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah. A, a lot of this money uh, is going so when the when the institutions closed down everything closed down nobody knew what to do with that with that trust now nobody knew what to do with that infrastructure so mm-hmm. it was a national waste you know so much money going in so much of money being pumped in it's a national waste mm-hmm. so what i want to do is what i want to create as a vision uh, with with the septic performers like i want to get all these students so tomorrow whether there is a school or there isn't a school tomorrow there is coaching or there isn't a coaching what i want to create is i want like i said i want to create an exact ecosystem that a child would get studying offline visa wish to studying online so i i which i have which i have created and i'm building still on to it so i want to avoid this national wastage i want to avoid people investing hundreds and hundreds of crores and if you put the entire country together i mean we will we will not get the numbers at all so so i want to stop getting stop doing that people should stop doing that people should come students should come on to these platforms these platforms should you know uh, really do what an offline is doing and uh, help the country to grow that money can be pumped in somewhere else in in you know better things to do and maybe in making the technology better so that uh, because of the uh, you know ai enabled technology and other technology where a student will get personalized kind of a uh, you know feature built mm-hmm. in into our uh, platforms so okay. that money should be going there 
and mm-hmm. which is which is much lesser which is much much mm-hmm. lesser than mm-hmm. you know building uh, infrastructures physical infrastructures okay um, you know you did earlier talk about why um, you did talk about the fact that you're not actually looking for, uh, looking at um, investments from say fund. a vc fund yeah. or a pe fund um, but you didn't tell me why <clears throat> see it's it's very simple you know there are certain ideologies of business uh, i mean uh, you know we all understand what business is and why would somebody invest i mean an investor would come in uh, moreover uh, with the fact that you know the the equity is diluted and uh, and and it's it's profits profits and profits by the end of the day Uh, the major reason for not uh, you know getting or diluting yourself is is there is an ideology i mean this this business is not started so this this venture is not started to make money uh, i always feel you know money is a byproduct of you so mm-hmm. I, so do the right things i mean this like i said it is a conventional way of thinking and i may be wrong i don't say i am i am correct i may be wrong but that is what i want to do in life i mean uh, you know i don't want that money i want those decisions that i take should be should be my decisions should be my team's decisions oh, okay. we all should come together and take a call for the company i don't want anybody else to take a call and take a call for the reason because that uh, you know venture capitalist or an angel investor wants to make money out of that yeah yeah, yeah. so i will for making money is a byproduct of the right calls that you take in life to to add value to people yeah yeah that, that, i i assume that's a good enough reason <laughs> i do understand if vcs come into play then they have their own agenda in mind um yeah so that's what right. are the kind of challenges uh, ultimately what are the kind of challenges that you that you face uh, on a daily basis um, and uh, how do how do you plan to overcome them uh, and of course uh, expansion plans as well daily basis uh, you know you uh, it's the right team which is required we we have the the top bracket of the team obviously which is a core team which is there to stay and to do well and to grow together uh, mm-hmm. but finding the right people uh, down below uh, the technologists and the other people mm-hmm. uh, in terms of marketing also in terms of other departments as well that mm-hmm. that is a challenge for sure it's not easy mm-hmm. to get the right uh, human resource yeah. and uh, in the long run obviously the the major issue is because like i said you know it's a lot of faith building that needs to be done along the way and yeah. faith building uh, then is uh, is through various ways you know mm-hmm. where uh, you have the right again teachers coming in to come and teach okay uh, so your teachers are your uh, real uh, you know bread earners i don't know how the other companies would take it but for for me i mean my my biggest strength would be my teachers okay. so getting the right teachers also sometimes becomes a challenge because a lot of these teachers are are hired by the by the other uh, companies mm. Mm. so mm. so getting them getting them also sometimes become a, becomes a challenge and mm-hmm. uh, and i mean there is nothing else i mean apart from that uh, like i said i don't need the money i want to grow step by step Uh, i don't want to go pan india and say hey i've got uh, you know thousands of crores which i can now invest uh, into advertising and build that faith building the faith is a natural phenomena for me uh, mm-hmm. which will take its time so that time again uh, which i will invest compared to others could be a challenge uh, for the company to grow initially uh, thank you very much mr sharma thanks for uh... Uh, participating in the discussion uh, and sparing your time thank you very much subscribe to the federal's youtube page for more interesting updates